Okay, so we're going to do another question response. This is post 98. Um, and the question was, who was the naked man during Jesus's arrest? This is kind of a interesting story where they go and they're arresting Jesus. They're taking him to trial. The disciples jump up and they cut off the ear of one of the servants. And Jesus, you know, tells them, no, that's not how we're doing it. We're not going to live by the sword because then you'll die by the sword. And then all the disciples run away. And then there's this man only wearing this linen cloth. And uh, it's really kind of an interesting story. So the question is, who is this naked man? So the short answer is, I have no idea. Uh, the long answer is, I have no idea, but I have a guess. So this is, again, a uh, no clear answer is given in the Bible. So I got to make that very clear up front. There is nothing in the Bible that will answer this question definitively or dogmatically. But um, here we go. So Mark 14, it records the account of Jesus being arrested in the garden. So after the disciples um, are rebuked for trying to defend him, uh, the soldiers start to lead him away to where he's going to go to these illegal trials through the night. Um, so Mark 14, verse 51 to 52 is our reference. And it says, And there followed him a certain young man having a linen cloth cast about his naked body. And the young men laid hold on him, and he left the linen cloth and fled from them naked. That's all we got. There's no identification given. You can't find a copy of this in the other Gospels. You can't find any further details. No other really reference. So any identity that we give this man is complete speculation. We're totally guessing or trying to match things up that are not necessarily true. So I believe, and I've said it numerous times, and I'll continue to say it, that there is nothing in the Bible by accident. Everything that's recorded in the Bible is there for a specific purpose by the Holy Spirit to teach us something. Um, so that doesn't mean I know everything. It just means that it's all there for a purpose. So um, I'm going to give you what I think here. So what do we know about this man? Well, nothing really. We just know that he was wearing a linen cloth. He lost it. He ran off naked. Yet we know who he isn't. So we know he's not a woman. It says he's a man. And we know he's not one of the disciples. He said that the disciples had fled away in Mark 14, 50. So that takes out most of the typical followers of Jesus. That takes out a number of them, and uh, particularly anyone that we usually find in the Gospels. So the remainder of this post, like I said, I just want to make it very clear, is opinion and conjecture. So this man is wearing a linen garment and is otherwise naked. Some people, some commentaries, they say that this is a burial cloth, that a linen uh, thing is something that would bury someone, and maybe this is Lazarus or some other man that Jesus had raised from the dead. And it's supporting this is that the Pharisees, they were actually looking to capture Lazarus. So Lazarus would be fleeing from them and the soldiers saw him and the, the servants uh, and the guards. So they said, oh, look, that's the other one they're trying to get. So they tried to capture him as well, um, because the reason they were going after him was that a lot of people were believing in Christ because of Lazarus's resurrection. He was a heck of a witness. But um and there also beyond that, the family was very devoted. Mary, she went and she poured this ointment on Jesus' feet and washes it with her hair. She's very grateful. And of course, I'm sure Lazarus is grateful. He came back to life. Um, but we have very little information. So very well, that might be correct. It may be Lazarus. Um, but the other, you know, there, there's another thing to consider. Why is this man unnamed, right? Um First of all, I point out that I believe Lazarus and Mary and all these were all considered disciples of Christ. They weren't the 12 disciples, but they were of the disciples. And we know that the disciples all fled. And it would be very weird this long after being resurrected that Lazarus would be running around wearing only a linen cloth. I mean, the bare minimum of clothes. That'd be like wearing a toga that was just made out of the cheapest material that you can find. Um... But if it's not Lazarus, why and why the mystery and who is it? I mean, why not give us a name? It says it was a certain young man. So, I mean, there should be a name unless the man is unnamed for a reason. Jesus made it clear that to the disciples that if they sought to be the most important in God's kingdom, they had to be the least. The greatest among them would be the least and would be the servant of all. And the one who would serve all and be the least would actually be the greatest. So he even rebuked James and John because whenever uh, they were there and their uh, parents came, they actually were asking to be seated, seated on either side of Jesus during his kingdom. And he says, listen, you can't you can't do what I'm going to do. You can't go to the cross. You can't do what I need. 
of course you are going to suffer, but it's not mine to give. So God chose not to reveal the identity of this man who remained beyond the time all the other disciples ran away. All the other followers were gone. This man stayed behind. The least was made greatest. I think that's a big point that we should take. We don't need to know who it is. We just need to know that he loved Jesus that much. Now, we have this other oddity that he's only wearing. I mean, it's cool that he was there. It's great. You know, but why mention that he was wearing so little? Um, that leads me to believe that this man very well could be, could be the rich young man we find a couple chapters earlier in Mark chapter 10. Um, this man had it all. He was rich, he was powerful, and he was devoted to try and serve God. He had <clears throat> done everything he could and been as meticulous as he could to follow the commandments of God. And Jesus told him, you know, here's the law. He says, I've done all that. He said, okay. So the guy wasn't getting the clue that he has to admit he's a sinner. So Jesus tells him, fine, sell everything that you have, take up your cross and follow me. And the man started leaving. He left. He was sorely depressed because he was very rich. The disciples are shocked. They said, oh my gosh, I mean, nobody who's rich then will ever get into heaven. Then Jesus makes a pretty crazy statement. He says, it's a camel will easier go through the eye of the needle than a rich man will get into heaven. And the disciples said, well, then there's no way. Nobody's going to get into heaven. And then he goes on to make an even more fantastic statement, even more just beyond our understanding. He says, with God, all things are possible. With man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Now, in my mind, this might be wrong, but I imagine this poor, depressed, rich man, poor in, you know, spirit, as he's walking away, he hears Jesus make that statement. Maybe he was just on the other end of the crowd when Jesus says, with God, all things are possible. Now, he may not have heard it. He may have. That's just a guess on my part. But what a magnificent thought. Think of the witness that would have been to the disciples. When they saw this man and they said, there's no way he's lost. We've written him off. He's a rich man. Jesus made it clear. It's very hard. But Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. What if that rich man was the one there? What a witness that would be to them that, yes, even those people can be saved. And then aside from that, remember, this rich man took everything very literally. He was a legalist. He went and he followed the law as close as he could. And when Jesus told him to sell everything, he walked away depressed. What if he got home and said, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And he sold everything, gave it to the poor and got himself the cheapest of the cheap outfits to literally try to once again, purchase his way into heaven. And he says, and I'm going to follow Jesus wherever he goes. I'm going to follow him. So he was doing everything literally, which by the way, won't get you into heaven. But once again, that was the way this, this man's mind worked. But then whenever it was time to go to the cross, the rich man realized he couldn't follow him everywhere. This was something Jesus had to do. And that's why he ran away naked. He had nothing. He had nothing but his shame. This was the rich man that would never admit his shame. But here, all he had left was his shame. The same shame that Adam and Eve drove them to realize that they were guilty in front of God. This rich man could have realized at that point he was guilty in front of God and realized Jesus Christ had to go to the cross for him. Only Jesus could ever bear that burden for him and for all of our sins. So I look forward to going to heaven and maybe meeting this rich man. Maybe it's not him. Maybe I'm totally wrong about this. But I think it would be amazing to hear his story and to hear how he came to the cross after he realized he couldn't go there for himself. Anyways, regardless who this man might be, praise God that while on this earth, people will never honor or remember those who serve Christ. And there are many of those who serve Christ in a hidden way. There are those people who pray every day for the salvation of their friends, their family, their children, their strangers. And they will never be rewarded on earth nor recognized. But God never forgets. He knows every work that you do. He knows every work that I do. He knows every thought that's in our mind. So what we should do is just praise God that this man was unnamed. Praise God that while we forget, he never forgets. And that's why I believe that the identity of this man has, will, has and always will remain a mystery until we go before the throne and God reveals to him who was this guy that ran naked through the Bible. It was just this one man that has no identity. God bless you. We'll talk to you next time where we continue through Exodus. Thanks a lot.